For this video, we're going to start by overviewing the layout of Moho, where the tools are, the features, and how context sensitivity plays a part in it. To begin, we're going to import an already made character, so that way we have something to work with as we learn. To do this, we're going to go over here to File, Import, and go to Library, Characters, and you have a wide range of characters to choose from, but in our case, we'll go to Anime Studio Pro 10 and then to Gruuli. Here, it'll ask you if you want to import this layer, and you can see we only have one, so we're just going to go ahead and click OK. So now we have a character imported, allowing us to explore the application a little bit more. Let's start with the toolbar on the top left. As you can see, we currently have the label tools, and then we have bone tools, layer tools, camera tools, and workspace. So this allows us to manipulate the bones as well as the layer and other elements with the camera. But you'll notice if I come over here to layer one, which is a blank vector layer, you can see I now have the ability to draw with these tools. So if I click on Gruuli, which is a bone layer, you can see I have the ability to alter bones. If I go to a vector or drawing layer, we then have the ability to draw with add point, draw shape, and a variety of other tools, in addition to the fill tools. Now, some tools may remain the same. So if I click on Gruuli once again, you can see that layer, camera, and workspace all stay the same. They just move down a little bit depending on what we're working on. So if I click on the vector layer again, you can see once again, we do have the layer camera and workspace tools. They're just positioned a little bit differently. If we click on Gruuli once again and direct our attention to the bottom, you'll see that we have the timeline and we have all sorts of different features that allow us to manipulate the character or the animation using the timeline. But this is also context sensitive. For if I click on the layer one vector, you can see that we have no keys currently present on the timeline. So again, depending on what you have selected and what you're working on, you will see different results or different things on your panels. Also, when it comes to the timeline and working with your layers, for instance, layer one is a vector and we can draw. But if we go to frame one, suddenly the drawing tools have disappeared. And that's because frame zero is the workspace for which we can go in and set up the rigs or drawings before we choose to animate them. And I'll touch more on this here in a later video. But just know that frame zero is the workspace and animation does not begin until frame one. And that will give you different options depending on which layer type you're working with. On the top left, you have your style panel and this pertains to your vectors. So if you want to change your fill color, your stroke, the width of your lines, as well as any effects that you want to apply to the fill, you can do so here. You also have the ability to choose different brushes. So if you want to design differently, you can even import brushes if you wish. And you have advanced features, which allow you to apply more than one effect to a color, as well as other abilities to use different swatches and play more with your styles. And then you have your file menu on the top. So if we come over here, we can go to file, edit, draw. But there is one more thing I would like to point out. If we go to file and go down to project settings, which is control shift P or command shift P if you're on Mac, this will bring up a new window allowing us to adjust the animation in a variety of ways. The most important elements here are probably the dimensions and the frame rate. It's important that you lock down these two options, especially the frame rate, before you get too far into animation. If you decide to animate at a certain frame rate and then it changes later on, it could throw all of your animation off sync and make things look slower or faster depending on the change. So it's always important to make sure you have this locked down before you get too far. 
You have the ability to choose between different presets. So if you wanted, for instance, a 1080p image, you can do so just like this or 4K, or you can enter in the dimensions yourself as well as the frame rate. 24 is a typical cinematic frame rate, so that's what it defaults to, but you can of course change this to whatever you see fit. The start and end frames dictate how animation will be rendered out. You can see right now, if I come down here to the timeline, let me just cancel this really quick and show you here, that the frame is set to 240 as the end frame. And that means right here, 240, 10 seconds in, is when the animation will end. So if we had animation go up to this point, it'll loop back to frame zero once it hits this point when we're previewing on the timeline. So if we come over here and hit the space bar, you can see it goes to the end and then loops back to frame zero from 240. And you can adjust this so that you have a longer duration, if you wish. So if you wanted this to extend out to 2000 frames, you could do that. Finally, you have the ability to adjust the canvas color as well as enable depth of field and render styles. These are all right here more for individual purposes if you want, for instance, a blurry background when you're zooming in on characters, depth of field might be a good choice for that. You also have the ability to turn anti-aliasing on and off, noise grain, pixelization, and more. So you have a few options here. And let's say you set things up a certain way and you want your documents to adhere to the settings that you have here. You can choose to save all of this as defaults so that way you don't always have to change it every time you make a new document. And that is a little bit about the interface of Moho, how you can set things up for dimensions, frame rate, as well as where all the main tools and features lie.